In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to attach a file to an email in Contact Form 7. I'm going to do it two different ways, or two different emails, I should say. One is attaching a file in an email that's sent to you as the owner, not necessarily a file that's uploaded, but a file that comes from the server on your website. And then also adding a file to the autoresponder message that is sent to the person who filled out the form. And I'm going to show you how to do both of those, and we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we are all about WordPress. And if you want to get better at WordPress, make sure you stick around and hit the bell icon or the thumbs up or both while you're at it. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. There's a couple different ways to attach a file to an email. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to upload a file. So I'm going to go to contacts and contact forms. We're going to add upload functionality to a form that exists on the site already. So I'm going to click on edit. You can create a new form. I've linked a tutorial down below where you can create a brand new contact form 7 form. This one is an existing one, like I said, where I'm just going to add the upload file functionality. So I'm going to copy this right here and then paste it right down below. And I'm going to say, please upload file. Delete the short code that we have there. Click on the file button, the file icon, file button, whatever. Click on required field. Give it a name if you like. Um, let's call it PDF. Give it a file size or file size limit, sorry. So if you add one MB, that's one megabyte. If you add one KB, that's one kilobyte, very small, much too small for a PDF file. Much too small for most files, actually, even image files, unless it's a little tiny icon. And if you don't add the KBs, we have a bytes number. So one byte is very, very small. I think a, a megabyte is something like 10 million bytes, I think. So bytes are quite small. I'm just going to choose 1 MB as the file size, acceptable types. I'm going to have as PDF. The ID and the class we're going to leave alone. Those are for CSS styling. Click on insert tag to insert the tag here. Then click on save. Now before we add this form to a page, we have to go to mail and we have our PDF short code right here. Copy that short code and add that in the file attachments field. Delete what's there if there is something, paste it. This is going to make sure the file is attached to the email when it's sent. You may have email 2 unchecked, you may have a check, depends on what you have going on. If you want to use email 2, which is an autoresponder, then check on this box. This email will be sent to the person filling out your form as long as you have an email field on that form. So the your email corresponds to the email short code or email input on the form. So they enter the email address and then it will be sent to that email address which will be entered right here in the to field. And then we can attach a form or attach the file here as well if we want to. So we can attach the PDF to both the email that goes to us which is the email one and the email that goes to them which is email two. We can also attach other things. So if we wanted to attach something that they did not submit. So for example, let's just go to our uh, media library, open that up, and say you want to attach this RSS symbol, click on that, and then copy everything after WP content forward slash. So copy this part of the URL, and then we can paste that on a second line right in here on a second line, please. There we go, second line. And that is going to attach that image to this email. If we have a spelling mistake or the plugin finds there's no image there, it's gonna show an error in just a second down below. Wait for it, there's the error. File attachment does not exist at that location. So we put the G back in, tab out of there. Now it's gonna check again. And it's gonna find that file and say everything is okay. And we can also add this file in a different way, we can add files that are on the server but aren't in the media library by typing in our server address. So that it starts with home forward slash your server account name, your hosting account name, WPPHD in my case, and then public underscore HTML, and then forward slash. If we wanted to get this exact same file, we could then go WP content forward slash and then just have this location. I'm going to get a different one. I'm going to show you how I developed this whole link right now, actually. I'm going to log into my hosting account. Then I'll click on File Manager. 
And inside file manager on the left hand side, you see the forward slash home up here. So forward slash home is likely what you're going to have as well. After the forward slash after home, you will have your account name, your hosting account name, which will be different than mine. And then you'll have underscore public HTML more than likely, which is where your website's located, or the, uh, the public facing accessible files are located here. And now you can link to any file in here by linking to that file. So if I wanted to go, I know for a fact there's uh, some files under events and then image. And let's just choose locations.jpg. So to finish this URL up here, we now get the error because there is nothing located here. So if we finish this up by going events, img, and then location.jpg, this should update as there is a file there. And this is how we link to a file. We got that wrong somehow. Let's uh, double check that. Locations with an S. So this is how we link to files that are not in our media library, but they do have to be on our server. We can't link to files outside of the server. They have to be on, on our server for us to be able to send them in these emails. So let's click on save and let's see what we've created. Let's copy the short code. I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to go to pages and add new. Control click or command click to open a new tab. Give it a title. So I'm just going to say CF7 attach file to email. I'm going to paste in my short code. Gutenberg detects it's a short code right there. So that's very handy. Then click on publish and then publish again. Click on view post to open that. I control click or command click to open that in a new page. Then we'll quickly fill out this form. I'm going to add a different email address here. Subject, attaching files. Message, I've attached a file. Now you can click on choose file to navigate to your file. I'm just going to drag and drop one in there. And there's our file. If you want people to be able to upload multiple files, check on the tutorial I linked to up above, and that'll take you to a video where I show you to do multiple file uploads. It's basically the exact same process, just requires a different plugin. And then click on send to send the file. And then we'll see what kind of results we get in our email accounts. And this email we entered up here, there are files that it's been sent. The email that we entered right here is the one that the autoresponder version is gonna to go to. So let's head into the email that you will receive as the, the person owning the website. So here's the email that you'll receive as their message up here. It's all smashed together. You have to edit that a bit in the, the uh, editor builder or the, the Connect 47 editor. It's all smashed together. You have to fix that a bit in the contact form seven editor, but we have the attached file that was attached in the form. And if we go to the email that's sent to the person that filled out the form, the autoresponder, we have the attached file that they sent us. And we have the two other files that we added, one from a media library and one from some other location on our server. And again, just to recap really quick, inside the mail tab, we have, or on our form, we have our file upload shortcode. In the mail tab, we copy the file upload shortcode, we paste it into file attachments. For email one, if we want to use email two, we paste it in there as well, so they get a copy. You don't have to. You don't have to send them back the file they uploaded, so you can just not have it in there. Sorry about that. At least not have it in there and maybe attach the other two emails. Maybe there's some kind of thank you image or something. And those are all the ways we can attach files to emails. I've also done a video on how to save those files to your dashboard. So if someone uploads a file, it goes into your WordPress dashboard and it's accessible there and in a folder on your server. Link to up above if you want to check that out. And I've made a tutorial on how to add images to the body text of, of these emails. So you could have your name and then your company logo below for the email that goes to the person who submitted the form, which is nice for branding, makes it look more professional. And if you want to check that out, also a link probably up above and definitely one below in the description. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you follow along, then hit the bell icon or the thumbs up and check out a private Facebook group linked to in the description down below. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.